I think the biggest thing is that emergency departments are paying so much attention to pain management now. If you looked at about two years ago, if you picked up one of our three major emergency medicine journals, there really wasn't, you know, maybe every few months there'd be a pain article. And now there's several articles in each issue. Um, part of it, you know, has to do with the opioid crisis, but I think we're also looking at <clears throat> new ways to treat pain, new medications, non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic. So it's, it's just great to see the interest in pain management because we have so many other priorities and different types of diseases we're treating. So it's a very exciting time, I think, for pain management in emergency medicine. So with this new awareness, um, as Dr. Henry was mentioning, there's a lot more interest, there's a lot more research being done in the field, but there's still a long way, a long ways for us to go. Um, you know, developing actual tools that can be used in the emergency department setting. Um, a lot of the tools that are currently available are not really designed for our population, and so that's kind of one of the things that we're interested. But I think we're certainly looking at, um, you know, new ways to treat pain, new ways to assess pain. Um, one of our biggest struggles is our patients often have minimal funding. They really can't get in to see a pain specialist or a pain clinic, so we have, we're their only resource. So what can we do differently in the ED to improve their care? You know, it kind of goes back to this pain, the fifth vital sign, and I, I think, you know, everyone's looking for someone to blame about the opioid crisis, but pain is important. You can call it the fifth vital sign or whatever. But that partially led to patient satisfaction scores, the HCAP scores, and two or three of those are, are based on, on pain. And even though they're hospital-based scores, your experience starts in the emergency department. So, you know, there's talk about taking those pain components out of the patient satisfaction survey. You know, I kind of have mixed feelings about that because I do think pain management is important, but maybe we did put a little bit too much emphasis. You know, it's easy just to give an opioid and take the pain away, and what we really need to be looking at are other ways to treat pain. There's a ton of non-pharmacological uh, methods I don't think are really being incorporated or used as much as we need to. So, we, you know, we don't want to throw off the baby with the bathwater. We still need to be treating pain. It's still important. But that's the way hospitals were getting reimbursed. So if you didn't have high HCAP scores, that adversely affected you. So I don't think the, the complete story is in, but um, it's, you know, seven, 50 to 78 percent of patients that come to the emergency department are there for a pain-related complaint. And so it, it is important. You know, we do have to continue to look at that. Just to add, you know, I think the key message behind pain as a fifth vital sign or what they were intending um, with that statement was really just communication. Uh, communication. And so communicating with our patients, um, you know, performing pain assessments within the confines, uh, you know, within the emergency de department parameters and, um, you know, the barriers that go along, challenges that go along with working in that environment, um, and all along keeping open communication with our patients. I think that's really where we can improve and where we should focus um, our energy so we can provide better care um, for our patients when it comes to dealing with their pain.